G'day cocktail lovers, I hope you've been keeping well. Hope you're ready for another cocktail. Continue, continuing my theme this week, the birthdays of people who were somewhat associated with the cocktail and drinking scene in the 20th century. December the 12th is Frank Sinatra's birthday, Old Blue Eyes. Not a barman himself, but certainly linked with the high life, the casinos, the drinking. Uh, apparently his favorite drink was, I think it's Jim Beam, Black Label, uh, and he liked it very simple, four pieces of, four rocks of ice, uh, no more, and he liked it with water that he thought opened up the characteristics of it. Not shy about having a martini as well with his Rat Pack friends, they were rather notorious for their drinking and carousing. And there was a drink made for them, and I guess in memory of them more recently, called the Rat Pack Manhattan. This drink was created in 2000 This drink was created in the year 2000 by uh, Wayne Collins, who's a barman at a place called the High Holborn in London. And when he devised it, he actually split the whiskey content of the Manhattan into five different ones, one for each member of the Rat Pack, the most famous members of the Rat Pack at least, because it's a somewhat convoluted story with the Rat Pack. Most of the recipes I found online for the Rat Pack Manhattan said, oh, let's not be that complicated. Let's just use one whiskey, use a bur bourbon. And I'm like, why would I want to be uncomplicated when I could be complicated? I am going to split this among multiple whiskeys. And just by coincidence with the five members of the Rat Pack, the five most famous members, which is of course Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Dean Martin, uh, Joey Bishop, and Peter Lawford. Uh, that was the original Rat Pack that performed in the early 60s. It's actually the history of the Rat Pack is a bit more complicated than that. That's the simple version. I happen to have five Australian whiskies, five different Australian whiskies from two different distilleries. I thought, I'm doing it. I'm doing a split base with all of these whiskies for the Rat Pack, and I'm going to use Australian vermouths for the vermouth side as well. And that ties in with a story not everyone knows about Frank Sinatra. I'm going to make the drink now and then tell you about the notorious story of Frank Sinatra in Australia in the 70s. A Manhattan usually has one and a half to two ounces of whiskey. I'm going to do half an ounce of five different whiskeys, so slightly more than you get in an average Manhattan. Uh, towards the last of this one, this is Starwood, a Melbourne uh, whiskey. Most of the whiskies I'm going to use come from Starwood. This is their 100 proof single malt Fortis, which as you can tell by the fact the bottle's empty, I really like. It's really good. But there's enough uh, for me to make one or two more drinks. Half an ounce of the Fortis. What I'm doing here is essentially giving you a license to be creative. If you have a couple of different whiskies in your collection, they won't be the same as the ones I have. Get creative and uh, split the base and see what it tastes like. The next one I'm using is another Star Wars called Dolce. It's a limited edition uh, single malt they've made that was matured in dessert wine barrels. So it's got a sweeter than average profile. Again, yeah, really nice. Half an ounce of uh, this Dolce whiskey. Momentarily, we're going to leave Melbourne and travel up to Sydney to the Archie Rose Distillery for their rye whiskey. It's a rye malt whiskey. This is going to make the drink a bit more interesting because it's got quite different characteristics to the Starwood single malts. And it also fits in with the story I'm going to tell about Sinatra that involved him going from Melbourne to Sydney. But again, half an ounce this time of the Archie Rose rye. The last two whiskies I'm going to put in are also from Starwood. What can I say? I'm a proud Melbourneian. This is literally the distilleries a couple suburbs up the road from me. This is another of their single malts, Nova. Great drink. I had a friend over last night, Abigail, and we did some whiskey tasting. She singled out Nova as her favorite. If you like whiskies, this one's particularly good. I'm gonna put half an ounce of the Nova in. 
one more whiskey I'm putting in. This is Starwood's Two Fold. Some of these are available around the world, by the way, and I do recommend them. Two Fold is a mix of wheat and malted barley. I describe this as a good entry level of the Australian whiskies. Uh, it is actually cheaper than the others, but again, taste wise, uh, if you're not so into whiskies, this one's a bit easier to drink. Um, they're all good in my opinion, but I'm gonna put half an ounce of the Two Fold in. The other key ingredient of a Manhattan is vermouth. And with the Rat Pack, the recommendation is you split the base between a sweet and a dry vermouth. Uh, keeping it Australian though, this one's from South Australia, from Unico Zillow. This is a sweet vermouth based around the Japanese citrus yuzu. Uh, very red, a very rich sweet vermouth. And I'm gonna put oh, about, I'm gonna be putting a bit more in. I'm gonna put about three quarters of an ounce of the sweet vermouth in. I'm going to add the same amount of a dry vermouth. This is Maiden Eyes Classic. It's a semi-dry vermouth. You can use a dry vermouth if that's to your taste. This happened to be what I have on hand. So three quarters of an ounce of the Maiden Eye Classic vermouth. The final touch is to put a dash or two of aromatic bitters in. You can use bitters you like, Angostura, for instance, or anything else. Keeping this Australian, I'm using this is a Melbourne made bitters from Mr. Bitters. This is their Negroni bitters, which is very nice. And I'm just going to put two dashes of the aromatic bitters in the mixer. There's no citrus in this, so this is a stirred cocktail. We're gonna stir it down for oh, about 30 revolutions just to get a little bit of dilution and get it chilled as well. One of the twists on the Rat Pack Manhattan is a little bit of orange curacao or another orange liqueur. So what I've done, it says uh, the general recommendation is a rinse. So what I've done while I've been chilling the glass, I've had about uh, 10 mils of orange curacao in there. Uh, you let it uh, coat the glass, tip it out, shot of orange curacao after. Not wasteful, I'm not wasteful. But now we want to strain this drink into our chilled coupe. Lovely rich color, particularly from the sweet vermouth. And there we have uh, the Rat Pack. Sorry. <laughs> Just one brief moment, I was like, what was it again? It's the Rat Pack Manhattan, looking rather glorious there. But you may be asking yourself, hey, did you do a milk clarified version of that? Well, I probably wouldn't have brought up the milk clarification if I had to have done it. So yes, I have done it. You can see, it's a, again, it's quite a striking difference. Uh, beautiful, clear, pale pink, as opposed to this deep, rich red one. But let's do a taste comparison. First with your uh, standard uh, Rat Pack Manhattan. Oh, I do like Manhattans. I like whiskey cocktails generally, the boozy ones. That's really good. I will be honest, uh, you lose the subtlety of the individual whiskies by blending them like that. So in all seriousness, blending them blending them like that is more of a gimmick than anything else. So it really is <laughs> a quite reasonable idea to just use a, a single whiskey in this and uh, match it with a, a split of sweet and dry vermouth. And I guess really then the only twist on a standard Manhattan is uh, putting just the rinse of the orange curacao in. Which again, I'll be honest, can't really taste, but it's a Manhattan and I like Manhattans, so I'm pretty happy right now. But I'm yet to taste the clarified uh, man. Let's have a go at this. Oh, wow. This tastes like grape juice. The, uh, it's softened all of the whiskey flavors in here and the vermouth's coming through. But the clarification process tends to strip out the tannins that are in wine and whiskey for that matter. This one, I'll be honest, just tastes like grape juice. Um, it is really lovely. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say this is better. It's very good in its own right. 
But because I like Manhattans. Oh, I like tasting the whiskey. And that yuzu uh, vermouth is really good. Really fruity, really rich. Goes so well with whiskey. Obviously, depending where you are in the world, there are, a, there are God knows how many sweet vermouths and dry vermouths. This cocktail is going to be quite different depending what whiskey you put in, what vermouths you put in. Uh, but yeah, Manhattans, uh, I have to admit, I love the classics. And uh, this is a bit of fun tweaking a classic. It's turned out well. It does lend itself quite well to the clarification process. I was a bit worried because what you need when you clarify is the fat content of the milk and you need acidic content. Now, the uh, vermouth wine generally might have been acidic enough on its own to trigger the curdling of the milk and so you could do the clarification, but I wasn't sure. So I actually added a mixture of lemon and orange juice to this to make sure the milk curdled. I was worried that that's what I'd end up tasting, but There is, I mean, that's probably why it tastes like uh, like grape juice. It tastes a little bit like juice at the moment. It's lovely. Uh, it's all good. Uh, but you know, old blue eyes might have thought, what are you doing here? Now, on, and I, I teased the story about Australia. Frank Sinatra in the 70s was trying to revive his career and he was doing an Australian tour. He decided he didn't like the media. He didn't want to front the media. And so the media were hounding him trying to get an interview. And so he did give a press conference. He basically said uh, he hated the media. And then he proceeded to say, oh, the women in the, the women journalists, they're the worst. They're the hookers of the whole thing. <laughs> and the unions went, hey, you can't talk to our members that way. And they black banned him. He was in Melbourne. He somehow got a flight to Sydney. But it started with the journalists' union saying we should ban him. And then all the other unions joined in. So the union for the people who would put on the show, the lighting and sound people, and the ushers, they all said, nah, he can't do a show here. Uh, and it got to the stage where he couldn't get room service because the unionized staff at the hotel were saying, no, screw that guy. We're not serving him. He couldn't get a driver. He couldn't get on a plane because everyone's saying like, oh no, if he tries to get on a plane, it's not leaving the ground. And it was this horrible stab out because Frank Sinatra was pretty obstinate and was used to people sucking up to them. So he didn't like the idea of people saying, hey, you need to apologize, dude. And uh, it ended up with a rather famous Australian, Bob Hawke, who was then the leader of the Australian Council of Trade Unions. So he was the most senior unionist in Australia. He would go on to be prime minister for an extended period, uh, but he was a notorious pisshead at this point. So apparently he and Frank Sinatra got together, drank a bit and nutted out a non-apology apology. There was you know, one of those classic, I'm sorry that you were upset apologies. And then a Hawkey told the unions to go, okay, let's go ahead. <laughs> so that was Frank Sinatra's experience of Australia in the 70s and that's why I wanted to use Australian components for the Rat Pack Manhattan just to, I mean he's not alive anymore but just to revisit Frank Sinatra's misadventures in Australia which I have to admit I find hilarious um, so yeah that's a story not everyone knows there was actually a movie made about it uh, basically it was quite a deal in Australia way back in the 70s. But uh, yeah, that was my excuse for making this version of a Manhattan. Uh, posthumous happy birthday to old Blue Eyes. A major figure in the 20th century, no doubt about it. And uh, I'll take any excuse to have a Manhattan. I hope you enjoyed uh, the drink. I hope you enjoyed the stories. It was a lot of fun looking this stuff up and putting it together for you. Uh, I'm going to finish these off. I hope you look after yourself. I hope to see you again soon. Please, if you're not already subscribed, it would be great if you did subscribe. If I'd like to see you again soon, I'll have some more cocktail videos, maybe a few more stories to tell you. Uh, but in the meantime, look after yourself, take care, hope to see you again soon, and cheers.